recording. So we're here. Welcome everybody to Open Source Ecology's work on local food systems. So local food systems are definitely highly interesting to us. And part of it is a software platform that enables us to do that effectively. So Victor Zonders from from Sweden, home of the, the no wait, is that the home of the Nobel Prize and the Peace Prize or that's a different country? No, that's Sweden. Well Nobel was Swedish. It's held most of the Nobel uh, except for the Econ Prize are held in Norway, so it's held in Oslo. Right. Given uh, up by a Norwegian jury, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, from so he comes from a pretty enlightened area of Europe. Like the, we're just talking about how that compares to America. It seems like the opportunities there are, like for a small town. We're talking about a small town where Victor lives and is setting up a a community on eight hectares. But his work is on the local food systems, a platform that allows local food systems to be created. So, so Victor, just tell us about the platform, the basics of it. What's its status is, and so just introduce it and start with a with a link of a working instance. Yeah. Okay. Um, so maybe I don't know if the chat you, is going to be available to view. Or yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, go ahead. Type it in the chat. Yeah. Local so, food. So the site is localfoodnotes.org, and it was released uh, in May. So basically, just to give a little bit of background on it, we did a did a pilot last year where we just put up a really sketchy site and started doing it in our home village. So we, and basically what it is, is like a pre-sell farmer's market. So you can book uh, food from producers locally uh, and have it, have it uh, delivered to a pickup point that is active once a week. So basically you, you design, you, you uh, set up a spot that is, um, but for, for you locally uh, and set a time uh, and a day for that. So say like Tuesdays at 6, but I'll show you that. Uh, and we, um, so we started doing that last year and then we figured we need to make a proper platform out of it. So we started building in November and released it now in May. Um, and maybe I'll, should I screen share and, and yeah. show? Yeah, go ahead. Go into the screen share and tell us about some of the features. So the thing that's attractive, of course, from the open source ecology perspective is that it's an open source platform. And the way you're doing it right now, you're encouraging people to, to download it and install it themselves, or do you also host it? We've ho we're hosting it yeah. now. I mean, that's, and what, like our economic model, if you wanna start yeah. in that end, because yeah. that's, uh, is that we are, the only costs that we are, are, are or the only, Thing that costs is to be a, um, a consumer on the site. So when you want to make bookings, you have to uh, get a yearly membership, and that membership is gift-based. So it's you can set zero if you want, but you can set whatever whatever membership fee you want. You can see my screen now. You can see that this is uh, our current number of supporting members, and this is our current average supporting fee. So basically, that cost is for for a year, and then after a year, you get prompted again uh, to give whatever you want to give. Uh, how much is that's that in? How we want to fund the development of the How site. much? Just look at those numbers again. Two hundred nine kroner. How many? Uh, how how much is that in that's euros? 20, Twenty euros and maybe dollars. I don't know what the dollar yeah. is now, but maybe twenty three. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's that's also uh, including the members that we had last year because we said that during the pilot they were going to get membership for next year as well. So. Um, uh, so that's how we've set it up. I mean, you can, the, the code is available. You've got a link to uh, GitHub in the bottom. You can see our, our repo there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've set up, and I mean, we're using, we're using uh, OpenStreetMap uh, and some other, some other uh, external things. But basically, since none, so no transactions happen on the site, um, there is, um, only, only the supporting membership thing is the only thing that you need to have a credit card or something for. Uh, apart from that, uh, all the bookings, it's just information. So bookings that go to the producers uh, and the deliveries that come. And then you can choose whatever medium you want to pay with. So if you want to pay with cash or like electronic transfer or like phone, I don't know what you have there. We have a, um, a um, just paying over the phone to anyone else with a phone number is really, really simple, called Swish. So that is used by a lot of producers. 
So basically you do payments uh, elsewhere, which means that there's really no reason for us to, to limit it ge geographically. Like we don't have to think about taxes uh, and things like that. Uh, so it's open for anyone in the world to just start a node and start using it. Um, right. Let me ask you, did, did you design the concept? You're primarily the lead architect of the concept or was there a team or? We're, we're a team. So we're three people uh, doing right now. We started uh, two people yet last year, um, started to look at what we wanted to do and we were looking at like how can we deliver more, like how can more producers than one, like we, we were looking into like CSA and actually the, the partner that, that I started with in this project already did a pre-study on CSA in Sweden and what was available. So for those that don't know, it's Community Support Agriculture, uh, which is basically like buy sh all share of somebody's produce uh, for the season. Um, but so we're looking at what's available and then trying out of the needs from that, trying to build like what would be a good solution to have all these drop-off points synchronized. And then also, how do you make it more flexible so people don't have to go full CSA? But you can make things available for like, oh, I just want to sell some tomatoes and some salads, some smaller things, whatever, uh, and make that really easy to use. So mm -hmm. after that, we started, we did the prototype last year, which was really messy. We had to do everything on the site, uh, and now we've built it. So it's, it's um, yeah, we've, we've, we've gone from the CSA model and tried to make that a bit more flexible. That's the basic yeah. Thing. Let me just ask you about the design, like the picture, like when you download the... Um... I mean, is this sorry? Is this WordPress or what's the what what platform is it on? So we built it. We built it from scratch. It's it's using Laravel, which is the framework. It's a it's a PHP uh, framework, uh, and of course some some JavaScript and stuff on top of that. Uh, but basically, it's it's uh, so it's built from scratch in Laravel, um, using you know normal it's, it's a PHP or it's a MySQL database and stuff like that. Um, you can see the whole, I mean, the framework is really easy. It's a, it's a um, model view controller, like, yeah, model view controller framework, um, so like pretty standard, uh, mm -hmm. but it's working really well. And so is, I don't really know how to code that well. So the other, David is the other partner of the project is doing, has done pretty much all of the coding. Uh, I can really only help do bug fixing and stuff like that sometimes. Uh, and some some like design work, some translation work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he's built it basically by himself. Yeah. Do you recommend people to to actually? So for example, on this on the localfoodnodes.org, you just recommend yeah. that people just use that and and s start their project there, their local food project there. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, that's yeah. that's um, for, for us. That's it's really interesting to see how it how it. And, and find the needs for other people. I, I, of course, you could replicate it and do it yourself, but I, I'm guessing that most people don't want to set up their own um, service and yeah. do all that stuff. At least people that are just wanting to have food nodes around. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, yeah, it's, it's open, it's, it's available, and it's functional. I mean, there's a lot of features that we want to build that we haven't built yet. Mm -hmm. we, we've been doing this uh, on our spare time mostly. Now we've just started getting users and getting some funding, uh, so like getting people to pay memberships. Uh, like the month of June, we had about uh, 700 euros in, which was the month, the first month that we launched. Uh, and now it's grown. Uh, we will see what July is, but it's better, bigger than June at least. Yeah. We'll see, hopefully it keeps growing, and, and I mean, that's going to be our funding to keep it, uh, you know, keep it completely open and keep it um, available for people. You mean the the memberships at the bottom of the page that you show, show the numbers the average one being about 20 20 euros that that part yeah mm -hmm. yeah excellent well, i'll i'll, I'll uh, log in and you can yeah. see so so, so just, i've logged in with my account oh yeah sorry yeah so the question would be say you're a producer we've got our aquaponic greenhouse here and we've got yeah. a bunch of produce how does it look to set it up what if you want to be a node that produces food and sells show me how that looks with okay, so if you want to, so oh, let, let me change the language here. It's still, let's see if we have this here. It's still, uh, change it to English. So you can see, yeah, we've, we've got translations coming for for a bunch of languages. We've gone halfway with like French and German and some mm -hmm. others, but need some more work with that. Uh, but English and Swedish is done. We've started building it in English, so some some translations to Swedish is missing, but English should be good. 
Um, so basically, what you can see is uh, this is like the dashboard of your when you log in, and you've got your you can you can find notes. So basically, go to the map and see what's around you. Where you uh, can buy food. Sorry, log in as a producer or a user. So basically, you log in to get an you create an account, and that account is both for you as a, as a user and as a producer. And what you need to do if you want to create um, a producer account, maybe I should. Well, you just don't have like this part of so this part of the of the menu uh, until you create a producer account. Uh -huh. uh, and and so you like that button's not here now because I already am a producer. I think we've possibly still kept whether or not you want to create an additional producer account. Um, if, if somebody has more than one, uh, like you run two farms or something, but regularly you have one producer account as one producer. Um, I think, I'm not sure that's still in there. But anyway, if so when you, when you just to set up your producer account, you basically edit, uh, you enter this information. So you enter your company name and your email contact details and you describe your your um, company. I'm not currently selling any. I'm, I've got a mushroom production coming, but I'm not currently selling anything, so I've, I haven't entered too much here. Um, your payment if you know, info, like what currency you want to get payment in and how you want to get your payments. Uh, and I mean, we this is completely open to like community currencies and, and alternate. You can pay with whatever you want. Like a, that's kind of a, a really important feature. I feel that we can step out of. Always having to use the same currencies. Yeah. Um, and you can enter like your social, so your homepage, your external homepage, your Facebook page, your Twitter, whatever you use for marketing, you put up pictures of your farm and have your, your story of who you are. Uh, you can enter that in there. Once you've entered that, you basically have a producer account. And then you can get into uh, creating products uh, that you have to sell. Basically, you just create a Create a product, uh, and you enter the name of the product. So you, you're aquaponic gardening. You're probably selling a bunch of kale. So you grow that, uh, and that's good for you. You enter the price for the product. So say you're in, and, and that depends on like how you want to sell the product a bit. But you probably maybe like the easiest way to do it is to say kale. You're selling it by uh, one pound, perhaps. Thing, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, and you want to charge, uh, I don't know, uh, five bucks for that. And that's a product, and it's uh, you can tag it with like a vegetable. Uh, you put an image up on that's a cow. Maybe I'll have something that's good. Uh, it doesn't matter really. I'll just put something in so you can see that the work. Oh no, kids. Okay, never mind. Um, so you put an image on. If, it, if you don't put an image, you'll just have a default image. Um, you can also put in like uh, product payment info. So some products you might want to get payment in advance or stuff like that. So you can enter that there, and that'll be sent to the customer when they put in the order. Uh, if you want to just mess around with the product and you don't want to have people see that you have it, or you want to save it for later, you can hide it. Um, you can also set uh, how long before delivery you need to have the booking. So if you need to harvest like a week in advance or two days in advance or whatever it is, um, you can say that. And you save the product. And then you set your production. So basically this is like how much are you making available on the platform. And so we've tried to make it uh, useful for different types of products. So basically you can have a recurring product, which is like eggs and stuff that you have. You just want to set like we get about you know 20 boxes of eggs per week. Or you can have like an occasional, or like probably your kale comes pretty regularly. Uh, so maybe you have like 20 kilos of kale. Uh, and then you just set, so we have 20, you put the boxes at one pound, 20 pounds of kale. Uh, and then you've set your production. So then you just choose a node nearby. So that means somebody has to create a node. I mean, you can produce, create a node, but you can also just go to somebody else who set up a node. Uh, to make deliveries there. So I've, I've got a node here uh, locally in my town, and I can say I want to come to this delivery point, this delivery day, this delivery day, this one, maybe this one, maybe I have a lot of produce, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, and then once you update that, you can go to the, um, to the node, 
you can see this is all this is from the consumer view. You can see that I'm now added. Um, Oh, very nice. Okay, one pine there. This is on the live site, so I'll take that down just now. Uh, but just so you see, like that's how it that's how you put a product in and how you connect it to Node. And right now, what's uh, in the United States? You don't have any nodes in here. You just got some in Europe. Yeah, in Sweden. Basically, Sweden now. Like that's all we've been doing. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been working in Sweden. We have a lot of um, a lot of contact here and people that are setting up nodes not locally because basically the big part of getting this working is to have somebody that is doing the local marketing getting uh, the local producers to, keep, to, to come because the more producers you have at a node at a delivery point the more uh, attractive it is to people to buy yeah. I mean that's just, you need range to make it useful for people to go there yeah certainly and so that's what's taking time to set up yeah What's a typical node look like? Like, for example, do you, the close, one closest to you is at somebody's house or farm or something? So we have the one closest to us uh, is in the middle of our, our village. And that's just outside of, like, we have a house that is um, owned by a kind of a um, company that is owned by 300 local villagers out of thousands. So it's kind of a fun uh, um legal thing uh, so outside of that house there's a little space and that's what we're using because that's kind of a community space uh, that's done that has a lot of things happening on it anyway uh, another possible option is to move that we've been talking about is to move it up uh, to the local grocery store and they're pretty happy to do it uh, which is interesting and I, for a lot of places in Sweden I think this is a really good option because the grocery stores are becoming more like a service spot for a lot of different services and less about fresh produce because they can't really sustain having fresh produce based on the amount of people there are here in the countryside. Um, so it's kind of like that's a really nice hybrid thing where you place it at a, at a so it's like a partnership. So people go huh. in and buy their other like stored goods and, and things that hold for longer or like convenience, milk and stuff like that uh, if it's not available on the note. Um, and then you have some fresh, fresh stuff that gets delivered straight there. Are you saying that, for example, the local food store where you are does not have lo like uh, national or international supply chains? No, they do. It's just, it's just they don't have a lot. Like, for instance, for fresh vegetables, Yeah. they don't have the amount of people buying there. So basically, we're in a really small town. Uh -huh. and most people do their grocery shopping in like a big place. So you go out like once a week to a big chain store. And do your grocery shopping. Yeah. Uh, and you get like small necessities and stuff like okay. that at the local store. So basically, they, they don't have the, the, the customer base to, yeah. to maintain really good fresh produce, um, as, which is locally grown. So that's kind of a partnership possibility there. In the cities, I think it'll be a little bit different. Um, I, there, there are some of these happening. Uh, there's a, they will go into that as a tangent, but there's another. Uh, like movement that came from Finland that's doing the exact same thing only they're just using Facebook they're using Facebook groups uh, and just people are posting um, their producers are posting their produce in an event uh, that's connected to the time and space uh, and then just people are commenting on that post saying I want one I want to blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's like one of the one of the big things happening around here mm -hmm. uh, and that so basically we're really thrilled about that because that's kind of getting people excited about buying straight, buying directly from producers. But then we're trying to build a long-term administrative end of how this is going to work. Like, how do you how do you get recurring customers? How do you get this to work smoothly? How do you get orders that function well? And how do you do it outside of you know Facebook? Not everybody has Facebook. Not everybody wants Facebook. So we want to have something else that that works for everyone. Tell me about how you your strategy for getting the recurrent cu customers, generating community on the site. It looks like you got products, but is there any social aspects to the site as well? Or no, we're um, we're discussing that quite a bit, and we want to do a workshop or two on that in the fall when we get back into like right now. It's bit vacation time and stuff like that here in the summer. Mm -hmm. so we're taking we're we're taking it a bit slower as well. We've been working a lot this spring, uh, but we're into. Like one of the things that is really close in development—that's one of the next things—is making um, a uh, automated 
email uh, that comes out every week, or you can get it as a, uh, just a notification. We're, we're working with getting web notifications and stuff like that working as well. But otherwise, an email that goes out with everything that's available for your next delivery. So basically, you're getting like a, a flyer or like a, a, an email every week that has everything that's going to be, so you can just go straight in and book it. So you get it kind of pinged every week to see, oh, what's available now. So that comes out like three or four days before the delivery. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what's optimal. We'll see what, what uh -huh. people have. But yeah, so that's one of the things we want to do. Social would be, I mean, a lot of it is um, the, the nodes that work well, people usually post like ads for what they're, what they're selling onto Facebook groups and stuff like that that's local. Uh, so you can just, you can just take like, their, yeah, I've got a product here, somebody's got a product, and you copy the URL and just paste that and write a message on Facebook and you post that in a bunch of groups so people can just follow the link and then do ordering. Um, so that's a good way to for, for producers, but I mean it's it's going to be um, uh, up to the producers still to to have relationship building with their customers. And I mean once you get a really, if you are doing this like local food really well and get some really appreciative customers and you produce really nice food, it's, it's a lot easier to retain uh, a recurring customer than it is to get a new one. So. Um, so, I mean, that's going to be some work. We're not going to get rid of that, even though we were on the platform. We just going to make that a lot easier. So that mm -hmm. the, the, the hassle of booking and, like, you can book for, I mean, if, if there's something that you really like, you try it once. Like, say I, I um, want to book this um, uh, chicken, and mm -hmm. I really like it. So I'll book it for all the remaining uh, deliveries that they've set up. So that I know that I have that coming, and you just get paying for when. Okay, this week it's time to pick up this and this and this and this. Oh wow! So, like so it. yeah, excellent. So the the deal is, you go there and you know what you're gonna pick up. You know yeah. what you have up front. You can say, oh, okay, today I'm gonna collect a hundred dollars, and I get in and get out. And, yeah. And, and the doesn't is about it's like a fifteen minute thing. I mean, something sometimes we've made a bit longer events just to make them more social. So huh. we had like tastings and stuff like that. But a normal pickup is or drop off is like 15 minutes. Everybody comes in 20 minutes. Wow. It's like boom, boom, boom. You deliver all your stuff and then you go. So wow. That's one of the big things for producers is like they they it takes a lot of times to stand at farmers market and have like exactly. full Saturday. Uh, and we want to do it like really quickly. You want to do it really efficiently for both parties. I mean, you, sometimes you. You know, you don't need to do that every week. You need to make events that are special for that. Have like some. We've made some events with like some music and you have tastings and stuff like that. And that's really nice for people to get to know the producers. But then on the week-to-week -week basis, it's really nice for them to just come out, drop off the stuff, and go. Yeah. No. That that's a huge selling point of this uh, efficiency of that step. You. N People order online, and you know what you've got coming in, so you just have to bring it over to market, and then people just pick it up. I mean, you you also don't you don't even have to harvest more than you've got booked. I mean, you can, exactly. You can, you can make sure that you are you aren't taking stuff off that could sit there, and you could. I mean, it's it's a lot of that. I mean, you can you can also put if you if you've got really uh, goods that are in demand, you can put uh, booking deadlines that are really far ahead. So that you know, like you know that you're gonna have, you've got everything sold out or not. And, I mean, you can also put in produce that are really late in the year, and you can put them up early and see whether or not you should fulfill. Like, should I produce this much, or should I maybe scale it down a bit? It doesn't seem to have a lot of people that want to book it that far, and or like stuff like that. Uh huh. Uh, so, so it's kind of like gauging gauging people's, um, you know, the demand as well. Uh, and you can test products. You can say like, I'll, "I'll deliver this in two months. Do you want it?" And you can have people book it if they want it, stuff like that. Yeah, excellent. Tell me a little bit of study of the industry standards here, or a study of your competition. What are the closest platforms to this that you see out there? I know, for example, one is out of our own backyards in New Zealand. Have you heard of that one, for example? No, I haven't seen that one. Okay, but what what do you know about the competition to this kind of platform? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot happening. Um, so the, the the closest thing to this is what I'm talking about. At least here is the Facebook uh, analog of this, which, uh -huh. which is really really 
everything pretty much exactly the same. Just everything is done through Facebook. Minus, uh, I mean, minus the the good efficiency yeah. of ordering. You just click and order. You got your shopping yeah. cart, right? You don't have that yeah. on Facebook, naturally. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, it's just like the, the the basic procedure is the same, but it's a completely different experience. Yeah. But, but still, like that's that's the most most thing that we find right here. But then we have a lot of we have a lot of sites that are. Um, I mean, in Sweden, so I, I haven't seen them. Like I haven't looked that much globally because these tend to be. At least I've found we don't have a lot of global sites that do this. Like these tend to be fairly local. So I've seen some sites in. Um, in other parts of Europe, there's a there's a site that's pretty big. Um, that's called the Food Assembly, which is really big in England and France. It's called something different in France, but I'm not can't remember what it is. Uh, and that's that does a, a very similar thing, like you can book for the next kind of event. It's more of an event. It's more of like a couple of hours of wine and stuff like that. Uh, but then that's also uh, you take a cut, like the. the the site takes a cut, and the host of the event takes a cut of all the um, food. Like we have that's one of our kind of big things is that we we don't take any money off the middle uh, on any product. Like you're dealing directly with the producer, you're paying directly to the producer. The producer retains retains 100% uh, of the income. All we all we get is the membership fee that you need to that you need to add, which is um, up to you uh, how much it is. So that's like the big difference between those systems. They're really big and they're really nice. I love them. They're great. It's just a little bit different. Uh, such as, um, give me an example. So that is the food assembly. Okay. Is an example can, of that. Can you, for example, um, can, you put, uh, can you screen share that, for example? How that looks, what yeah. that experience looks like? This is really nice. So this is the site and they have a bunch of assemblies. Uh, around Europe. Uh huh. Uh, and for example, this? how do they work? People also buy it online so, and 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 then pick so up or how? So the, yeah, you you go you join an assembly and you can book food there. Or you actually, I think you pay for it there. So you you buy it like more like a web store. Uh huh. But then you uh, come and pick it up whenever the assembly is assembling. Uh, yeah. Um. So yeah, the, the the concept is very similar, but it's like the site takes a uh, cut, and the the whoever whoever is hosting the event is taking a uh, cut as well. But they are, I mean, they they're doing a bunch of uh, organizing and stuff like that. It's kind of a, a nice setup as well. But it's a little bit more. It's a little bit less. Uh, I mean, ours is simpler. It's easier to set up. For example, like your notes, and it's easier to be more flexible for producers to do. Like just choose where you want to go, to what deliveries, and you just manage all your own products. There's nobody in the middle trying to make sure that everything's looking good and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're they're really they're quite big. And they're they've been doing well. They're about three years old, I think, or something like that. I'm not sure on that. Uh, but something we saw it a few years back. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it's been an inspiration for us. It's really really good. Um, there's another big project that I really like, but it's it's more complex. It's called the Open Food Network. I don't know if you know of it. Haven't looked into it. You want to take okay. a look at that real quick? It's also, it's also an open source food uh, system. And they're doing more of like the whole like transparent food chains. Uh -huh. So you can see everything like where your coffee is from and who's grown your coffee and like how much value add has been uh, charged for on every step, uh, like how much is the transport cost and all that stuff. They're really good, but that's a bit more, in our minds, we started talking with them, but it felt a bit more complex than what we felt was needed for local. Um, so um, Can you just show that on your screen? Yeah. And there's one in... Um, One in so there's like a Scandinavia one which is in Norway, but I don't think there's anything. Uh, let's see if I can find a map or something. Uh, it's, a little bit. I, I haven't got around to navigating the site yet. But I think it's a bit okay. So here's like Scandinavia. So they're they're setting up, but this is like trying to include a bunch of different types of businesses, like transport businesses and. And all sorts of, and you can also set up like a, a little store or uh, most of the time, like ones that I know, 
you uh, they go around and pick up products and prepare bags and deliver them to people or have people pick them up with like a bunch of different uh, produce from different people. Um, and that's like testing. And I think they, I mean, it's a really ambitious project. I think it's going to go really well. I think actually this is going to go really well hand in hand with what we're doing. Maybe integration at some point in the future. Uh-huh. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big project. And we're, we're, we've tried to keep it a lot simpler. Uh, right. And we also, they, they do payments on the site, which means you have to take care of all the tax issues and making sure you follow the rules because they become like a, the seller basically. Yeah. So the comparison of, I mean, of course, there's many CSAs, like, for example, the Japanese co-op comes into mind as a very successful uh, CSA type program where they deliver to your houses instead. So you can think of the local food nodes is more like a short term CSA you can think of. So you can basically subscribe to whatever you like, as opposed to you're subscribing for these next three months or six months, right? I mean, we're, we, yeah, we're, we're keeping it available. I mean, you, you can produce, as a, one of the product types that we have is a CSA product, uh-huh. which basically means that if you want to book this product, you're booking it for the entire season. I see. Uh, so you can, you can choose that option as a producer, because I think there's a lot of value with that. And we have some, like I, my, my uh, uh, vegetable uh, box is like that, and a lot of people have that. But I think we also need to make it available for people that don't want that right so so it's like so that's for us that's just a product option uh, yeah. and you can also just put in products that are you know i got a glut of tomatoes i just want to put up 15 kilos of tomatoes for the next delivery really simply you do that people can book that and sell that right um, so so when people meet at the location pick up location they do their transactions there yeah so that's either that or you can do like uh, invoicing just give sometimes when it's been um, with some bigger meats and stuff, you've got an invoice with the, the, the product and they pay it afterwards. But otherwise, usually, like most of our uh, deliveries, is use this mobile payment system that we have in Sweden that works really well. It's, um, it's free for, it's, 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 it's a small fee for companies uh, and free for, for private consumers. Uh-huh. So, so that's been used mostly. So people use that when they come to the site, you get the stuff and you sell, you pay by Swish. And stuff. Wait, so you do that before you actually pick up the food? No, usually you do it when you pick up the food, yeah. Uh-huh. Is there any mechanisms where you prepay? I mean, say, say to address the issue of someone not showing up. Yeah, you can, just, you can choose that. You can enter that as like, you saw the product in the product, you can say uh, as additional product payment info. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just say we need you need uh, prepayment uh, or payment before delivery or something uh, because of we've been standing with chickens that have gone bad or whatever you know, right uh, you want to write but yeah we had and we had some some a little bit of issues with that last year somebody that didn't pick up or come or come and so they we talked about what to do with that and we basically said we'll get people to prepay at least the first couple of times or until you know someone or you know whatever Mm -hmm. um so that's just you can just set that as an option that we deliver once you pay like you do i mean that's you can you can we're also starting we've started work with with this i'll show you the producer side of it like the the um, um how you can how you can um so how you can kind of keep track of your orders so you've got like once you've seen someone ordered something from you here here's what you need to deliver for each delivery uh these are all test stuff because i don't deliver yet but um so i can go into this delivery and say okay so i seen this person has paid so i just click paid so i know that that's paid and i can say okay that's confirmed or delivered or somebody called and canceled so i'll just cancel that order so you can kind of keep track of that but and and so then you can just see like oh if i'm if i'm choosing to have prepaid on this product i just make sure that everybody's paid unless i keep that light uh, and then you can look at your order so when it's time to pack you can uh, you can look at what do i need to pack today uh there's actually built in like a little pick list so you can see for each person what do you need to pack for that person if there's more than one mm-hmm. uh, item uh and that's what you need to pack uh, and if they haven't paid you don't deliver to them right uh, if that's what you've said yeah. yeah. What do you recommend for the prepayment options? Like, what's what have you found are effective means to do that? So you've got your swish, you said. Yeah. 
and you... that's what we use as well uh -huh. for prepayment because you can see that you can you both get a notification you just get it on your cell phone you see you can like we've we've put in an order uh, reference so basically people can write that in the message box of the of the of the um, payment app uh, so they know like what's been paid for when they get they just get a payment and they see okay so that's a reference that's I can check that off so say um, so say somebody pays buys on your site uh, do they get a follow-up email to say okay oh, hey, please pay this way or the, it's yeah. all up to them so when you send uh, an order I'll go to the I'll go to the test site because uh, we have a staging uh, where things aren't live um, so we've got some products there this is actually being reworked today so it's going to be fun to see how how the emails come out now um, Let's see. If I want to, I want to try and book some of my own stuff, and I'll get two emails. I'll get one email from me as a consumer and one email uh, as a producer. Because uh, so normally you just get one email if you if you if you consume when you book some goods, you get like this is what you just booked, and this is how I need to pay. Um, so I want three small boxes of shiitake. Oh, Are the, is that a picture of actually your mushrooms? No, they're not actually my mushrooms. I, my my logs haven't been fruiting yet, and uh, they've been we inoculated last year. And I try to get some to fruit this uh, spring, but so far nothing. I've heard that they can take quite a while, so I'm not giving up hope. Right. Yeah, we'll see how they go. It might be interesting to differentiate. Like like there should be a check. Like this is actual versus another picture. Yeah. Yeah. I I I'd, I'd, I mean I'd uh, really recommend people. And, and that's like feedback me mechanism. We only have like what you can do. You can't really um, um, uh, ban users to say like you can as a node administrator. So the one that set up the node yeah. uh, and setting. I can show you how to set up a node too. That's really simple. Um, so that person has the prerogative to say that a producer can't come and deliver. So like block a producer from delivering to that node. If you find a producer that doesn't, you know. It's fake, like not marketing in a good way. Like if they, you know, they're, they're not doing up for deliveries and customers are complaining or stuff like that, or having you know doing things illegally or whatever it is, um, you can block that. Uh, so that's like one of the feedback mechanisms they can have if customers are, are really uh, unhappy with the producer. You can say like, okay, so that producer can't come to this delivery. Uh, huh. So okay, so show how you set up a node. So is there okay, an act let me just, let me just uh, so I just booked this. Uh, so basically, so once you've done your booking, you can go to your your product cart, um, and then you see what you've been booking. So I took two boxes of this for that delivery and two boxes for that delivery. And once you send uh, the booking, uh, we're gonna get two emails. Uh, or I normally you'd get one email, but now. Uh, but we can we can uh, go back to that when they arrive. Uh, we'll go back to the site. So uh, yeah, to set up a node, like you can have you can have multiple nodes uh, as a person. It, that's actually already we have somebody. There's there's a point of doing. So we have somebody that set up two nodes that are fairly close, like two uh, adjoining villages, uh, so that and they're only shifted like 40 minutes in time. So there's one delivery at like seven in one village, and then there's another one at 7:40. So basically, producers can go on a route. So you can go and deliver at one point, and then 40 minutes later, you deliver at another point. Um, so, so there are instances where people are administrating more than one load. Basically, you have a, a terms of service which say that I, you know, I'm not gonna uh, obstruct people. I'm, I'm not gonna uh, set up a node in a place where I'm a private space that I'm not allowed to be at, or stuff like that. Right. As far as the liability for booting people who abuse the system off, is that the node administrator's duty, or, or is yeah, that? Yeah, as as I mean, for, for producers, that node administrator can kind of block, and we've been thinking about whether or not that should be shown to other node administrators as well, possibly, uh, that they've been blocked from someone, and require a text message saying why you blocked them as well. Uh, we haven't we haven't built that quite yet, but uh, we haven't had any reason to. Uh, like nobody's been needing to implement it either. Um, but it's yeah, that's that's what they can do. I mean, for for consumers, um, 
you'd have to go through us, which is a bit of a hassle. Like, yeah. Kind of hard to block a consumer. But basically, it's, it's, it's like any other online trade. Like, don't, you know, it has to go through, trust has to go through both ways. If you, if you go to, like, a Craigslist or something, you like, the first time you, you transact, maybe you show up in person, and you talk to each other, and you don't pay in advance. Uh, either way, maybe. Um, or, or you do. I mean, that's, it has to be up to the producer of what kind of risk am I willing to take. Um, right. With, I mean, who who gets the liability? Like, say a person pays and they don't receive a product or something like that. Who has the liability? Is that the producer or the node administrator? No, no. Every all the transactions go straight to the producer, and that's yeah. like this is basically an advertising board for producers. So the liabilities of of the products and and how the producer is concerning his customer is all on the producer. Yeah. All those liabilities are on the producer. We don't take liability for any other products how it's handled, whether or not they're legally done or not, or using the right permits or any of that stuff. Right. And how do you assure that legally? Do you have a legal statement on your site that says that? Yeah, or? yeah. we have a legal statement. When you create the account, you have a legal statement that says, I, I uphold, like, I'll, I will follow these, these things, and I'm my, it's my liability if I uh, create a product that's bad. I, you, you can go through the, the terms. They're there. Um, but yes, that's that's we've set up a, a term of agreement when you use the site that says that it's on you, uh, yeah. your behavior on the site. Is on you. And do you think, I mean, uh, that kind of legal language will be applicable any location or, or? I mean, it's in, it's interesting. I think that's that it would be good to get feedback on that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're we're doing things out of out of our locality uh, in Sweden. Uh, we're trying to use general language but we it'd be good to have somebody look into that if you know somebody who's uh, legal in the US that'd be great to, to, uh, to get some feedback on that right right yeah and of course the producer the producer can only uh, perhaps cheat once and then they get booted off the system right I mean if they don't deliver then yeah. they'd have to be booted off so there's there's good uh, check and balance there Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so to create a note, uh, so that's why the, the terms of use are there. Um, and they're also there. So there's another term of use for producers. There's one for just entering the site, there's one for producers, and there's one for creating a note, uh, basically stating those things. Uh, and then once you create a node, you just name your node. So it's like, um, uh, factory farm. Uh, you can enter whatever email you want to use for that. That's just going to be your node. Uh, that, so that's going to be available for people that want to contact you as a node administrator. Uh, enter information like where it is and like park uh, in the driveway, whatever uh, is useful for people to be able to facilitate their in and out and what's happening. Okay, so there can be emails with it. So um, address, and that's basically what we use to get the marker on the map is this address um, and that'll be interesting to see how that works actually now with the US I hope that that's enough maybe you'd have to put in actually uh, I don't know if Google's gonna handle that yeah that's yeah. that's pretty nice um, have you considered the adaptation of this platform for other products yeah what we've been, uh, what we've been thinking around that is uh, we want to do it. I, I've got a, I've got a little uh, on um, either on the GitHub or uh, like on the wiki here. So, um, I've written a bit of that. That like, how I would like to see it as an open framework. Yeah. Basically, we we we're doing the food part, but yeah. you could just as easily do uh, just another view. And if you're sharing, like try to somehow share sessions and share logins and share. Um, Account so people don't have to get more than one account, and so you can also have your relationships uh, intact even if you're doing other products. But just have like a different view for different types of products. A garden product is an obvious one for me, um, like Cause wood. Because the, uh, the one that, that comes, the the one that comes to mind is the current need of ours is that okay we want to run workshops, yeah. extreme manufacturing build workshops at different locations so people can actually sign up for this node on a certain date. 
that would be actually well, interesting to maybe piggyback off your work. I mean, you've got all the infrastructure for that. I mean, yeah. maybe. I mean, that'd be really great to work on together because we really need. I mean, we've done. So far, you can set up an event as a node administrator or as a or as a producer because that's one a really big point. Like, basically, what we're doing is relationship building and helping relationships happen between yeah. producers and consumers. So you can you can set up an event uh, as a producer. You can set up an event as an node administrator, huh. which is kind of like an open farm day or something. Uh, but but yeah, I see. I see, like you can. I'd like to. It'd be really nice. We we talked about another group as well doing education uh, about using the same kind of nodes to set up courses and stuff like that. Um, Man. And then workshops would be great. But Look maybe, at that. I mean, that needs a, a, a little bit of a different. Uh, I mean, just just changing the interface enough. Have like basically you could do local nodes instead of local food nodes, and then have all these different like food uh, dot local nodes dot org and have like food stuff there and have education, have uh, you know garden, have whatever, and you can just make change the interfaces uh, enough that they're useful for that application, and and use as much as the database structure and stuff like that as you can, uh, so you don't have to don't have to rebuild it all again. Yeah, I mean it's it's customers. It's coming to an event. I mean, I could see that, say the Eventbrite functionality, it's right here. You yeah. have an event, you've got people that sign up, you've got a payment, and you've got yeah. announcement of product. Uh, I could see local fab nodes, for example. Yeah. Uh, immediate derivative. I, I think we should actually look into this as a potential use. I mean, you've done, done all the work. I mean, basically the map, the, the basically the global map of nodes, that's, that's what we need, and a database connected to that. Uh, yeah. So we should definitely look into doing that. I mean, because right now we're actually looking for a, a platform. We're working on a platform for people signing up to workshops in various locations with, the, for example, the 3D printer. We're interested yeah. in running workshops worldwide. So basically what we're looking at is the concept where if enough people sign up for a location, then we actually host an event there. So yeah. that would be the kind of use that we'd like so so your pr platform as it is would stand for planned events but if you actually want to organize an event in, at a certain place yeah. that would need some modification we've, we've we've we have that as our one of the features coming in as well like doing pop-up basically doing pop-up nodes it's like and especially yeah. uh, like for us it's really interesting to uh to pair up with events so say there's an event yeah. on sustainability or something in yeah. the city, you want to make sure that your event uh, also provides local food for people to buy. So you can have yeah. like, you can pick it up at the end of the event or like at the lunchtime, you just make sure that there are fridges and freezers if needed so huh. people to store it uh, and stuff like that. So just, and, and that's really, I don't think it's that big of a, a job for, like, I, I, or actually no, it's not that big of a job to, to, to create pop-up uh, nodes. It's just one of the things we haven't got to yet. But yeah, uh -huh. that would, and that would really go well with what you're trying to do with with um, the, like the workshop uh, models. And yeah, setting them up locally. And then that's like it's only for that event. But you, as long as you have an account, you can just go to all sorts of workshops and people offer things all over. Um, so yeah, and I mean that's so that's that's a big part. Like this is the what I'm looking for the open framework kind of thinking, uh, where you have all these different like and another one is like distributed tool libraries, so you don't have to have like all the tools at one place, but you can once you can have all these uh, tools connected to a node and once you want to book something, you get an email to a person, you kind of agree on where to pick it up and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So you could have, you could share tools uh, in the local community, um, stuff wow. like that. Yeah, it's very exciting. If someone wants to be a developer to help you program this or to make new features, so you have to know PHP and what else? Uh, yeah, so basically it's all uh, Laravel is a framework that does... Uh, show a link to that? Sorry? Show a link to that? To Laravel? Yeah. Just to get any potential developers involved. Are you looking for developers to join the project as an, as an open source? Yeah. I mean, Naturally. It's, it's, uh, we'd, we'd definitely like to get developers, and especially in this kind of framework thing. We've got a lot of things that we know how to do with with food that are like features that we're going to roll out, uh, but I mean we still we still need help. It's just you know the the uh, how much we don't have a 
a lot of time to handle people. Right. Like people can be uh, autonomous in their work and create to have more developers uh, help out. Um, but but we're like we're so basically we were like we're we're going to have uh, this so the funding that's coming in. Uh, we'll see if we can support at least like a couple of days a week, hopefully, uh, in the coming fall for us to work on it, probably. Uh, and then we'll see how, like, if it, if it goes really well, we want to want to do this uh, pro- properly, like our developer wants to do it uh, more. So it's if we can get that running, we can we can also make more space for handling open source community development and like facilitating that stuff because I know mm-hmm. that that's a big point. I've, I've I've seen, as far as I know, the open source community. I know that like things like documentation and have help and 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 being available for people that want to help you uh, is a big thing um, but yeah so it's built on Laravel and it's, it's a really nice like I, I've never used it before and uh, we started this project but it's a really nice framework and so that handles things like database connections uh, you just learn how to how to use um, uh, eloquent which is their kind of um, language for, for MySQL um, queries uh, so you need PHP, and you need to learn this uh, framework, and there's some JavaScript probably is good if you want to, and HTML and CSS and stuff like that. But yeah, it's not it's not very difficult to learn. Like I've I've learned some of it, and I I'm not really like big of a developer. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Yeah, excellent. What what are your thoughts on? Have you considered any mandatory payments? Like so, this is all voluntary, and that's mm-hmm. awesome. But also, it might get you financial like maybe you don't have money to develop uh, have you thought of any mandatory payments that be, maybe some other uh, premium features that say you require yeah. people to pay for yeah we, we discussed it and I, I mean we'll see how we go I, there's a few things I can think of like we've been talking about for instance there's the whole statistics analytics kind of play space where you you could as a producer get more access to to uh, like really detailed statistical analysis of what have, how have you like what have been selling, com- like comparing to what you've been sharing on Facebook and like when, and what are other people sharing selling and what's doing well and like what's doing well in other regions, uh, that that is in in your region and stuff like that. Like those as a as this premium like intelligence service for it. Yeah. Um, but if it, I mean. I don't know. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see how well we get funded because I'd really like to have those features available for everyone anyway. And it, it, I'm, I'm kind of pushing the gift model. And I, I mean, the only, the only, uh, the big difference between a fully gift model is like we're just saying that you have to make the choice of zero if you want to give zero, but you have to actually state that and put your credit card in and say I want to give zero, and that's the big statement. Um, so, so it's a bit different from like Wikipedia, which you can use anyway, but you know they're struggling with funding. Uh, so, we're, so we're um, we're experimenting with this, but but yeah, there are other there could of course be other uh, features that we needed. Uh, I mean, that it, it kind of depends as well on on whether you want to grow it slow and organically, or whether you want to go full kind of you know ramped up money uh, avenue. Right. Right. Uh, so it's, for, for, for me, it's really interesting to do this. Like we, most we, we still have the availability to work on it part time, uh, without being financially stressed um, right now. So it's it's going to be. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll see. I think yeah. that's an avenue that's possible, but we'll see. Let's see what and what is just to clarify. Currently, you do have the the explicit statement that you pay zero by inputting your yeah. credit card. Yeah. So you. So you know. In order to. In order to become. You know. In order to do bookings, you have to. You have to. Uh, to, to. To book food anywhere as a consumer, you have to. Uh, pay. Get a membership. So pay a membership. So enter this form, with a credit card number and expiry and stuff like that. But you can't put the amount zero in there. Like that's okay. We will. We'll accept that. But you still have to do it. So it's kind of like. You know, it's it's easy to not do it if you don't have to, but when you have to, it's interesting to see whether or not people. Because so we haven't had anyone put in zero yet. We have a pretty big flexibility, and like the so the average. Oh, this is on the this isn't on the live site. This is on the test site. But the average is as I showed you. Uh, 
uh, 20 euros um, now. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I mean, we'll, we're flexible. If it doesn't work, we will have to figure out another way to do it. Um, and I mean, maybe you you have to pay a certain amount. Maybe maybe it comes to that you need to pay a membership fee of 20 euros in order to use the service, or or you charge producers something for some. I mean, we'll we'll we yeah. have to determine. Yeah. And the 20 like the the donation there is that you get reminded of it every year. Or that's a yeah. one time. So once you once you like 365 days after you've made the donation, yeah, you no longer are a, a paying member, and then you get prompted again. Like if you want to, so you can do anything on the site, but once you want to send send an order, that's when it says like, okay, you have to become a paying member again. Yeah, so, so this is pretty good. So you you're getting very explicit uh, accountability or commitment from a person because they're actually putting in their credit card. Yeah. So they're they're they gotta they have a little bit more motivation to uh, be engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's also we're also we're also committing to being completely transparent about our financing. We're going to show everything of how uh, what money flows in and what money flows out. Uh, yeah. So what we what we're paying ourselves and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, excellent. So that's that's going to be that's. I mean, we haven't like we we're still working on how to how to implement the best. Like I've been looking into as well on uh, talking to Open Collective. Do you know them? No, I don't. Okay, I'm sorry. They, I think that they're really interesting. I think they could be really interesting for uh, open source ecology as well. Um, so basically, they are a um, way for people. I mean, one of the basic things that they do really well. It's totally transparent accounting, uh, so anyone can see the money coming in, the money coming out, and if you even if you don't have a legal entity, you can get somebody that's a host, uh, that is like a host account, uh, and then uh, you can still receive funding. So like an open source, uh, they, so basically a lot of their um, um, users or, or, or communities that run on Copa Collective are open source projects. So basically there's, there's normally not one person that is, um, or like a legal, legal body for that open source library. But you can still receive funds if you have a host company that holds that money for you. Uh, but then they aren't; they don't have access, or like you, you only access that money through the Open Collective and getting invoices sent to the Open Collective and the money. Mm -hmm. So this is some. So so for instance, if you have like um, a, a network of of um, uh, Fab Labs or something where. You don't necessarily want to set up a whole organization around them, but you still want to have finance to in them. Um, you can kind of use this to have like a host company and then have daughter or like uh, other companies that are subsidiaries that don't need to have the legal, uh, but can still be run independently. So Open Collective provides the legal framework for you to show the transparency? Yeah, even and if also you it, it's... It, it's uh, useful for having uh, ongoing crowdfunding, so you can back the product or, or be sponsor of a product. That's what these kind of guys are doing. They have all these. So this is another thing that we're looking possibly to get into with with financing. Because um, so there they have a bunch of sponsors that you that like their framework. Oh, sorry, that like their framework Webpack. I think that's the biggest one so far. So they have like big companies, and then you have smaller sponsors. So this is basically like ongoing crowdfunding. Um, but also with with the need for transparent financing in that, so there there you're you're committing to 100% transparent financing at this, in the same platform that you're doing your uh, crowdfunding in. And how does that, for example, like say we are we're open source ecology as a as a non-stock corporation in the United States? If you go on this, then what's what I mean? What would be the the use case? Basically, it's for you to. I know you have. So, for instance, the the True Fans program. Basically, you can have a backer here, uh, or or you can get other. So you can get companies that maybe, you know, that can say you have. You're starting to get enterprises that run brick presses or do something like that, uh, and they can become sponsors because they, you know, they want to sponsor you to develop the technology that then they yeah. use, uh, and they can become like heavy heavy duty sponsors and have their their uh, be promoted like this uh, on the site. Um, 
So it's basically trying to trying to fix like um, financial, I don't know, a, a transparent financing for open source. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, like a feedback me- mechanism. Because yeah. a lot of apparently what, what they've come out of is a lot of companies l- would like to contribute to open source development, but there hasn't been a clear way to do that. Like there hasn't been a clear way to how do you who do you send money to? Like who who owns this thing? Who runs each? Um, yeah. Does software. Open Collective have? Um, they take a cut, or it's hundred yeah. percent. They take they take five uh, percent of funding that comes in through Open Collective. So like if they if you get backers or uh, sponsors, but you can also connect like you can connect your account and you can still do a transparent reporting and and outlays like uh, sending invoices and they don't take any uh, like if you're getting money from another source and just put it on your accounts. They're not going to charge for that. But any money that comes in through backers or sponsors, they take 5%. But mm-hmm. if you're a host to another company, you can choose to add uh, like a 5% or something um, to that, like a subsidiary or whatever, like a, a partnership yeah. uh, where you're hosting another um, uh, yeah. non-legal. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's take a look at the use case going back to the food production. Let's say for, say for open source ecology facility here. Like what would be the the process? So say we want to set up a set up a a pickup time. So we just register, we declare ourselves as producers, and then publicize that, and we can possibly yeah. start very small, like saying, okay, well, hey, we've yeah. got a few few of this product, and so that's something we can do immediately. And the, the amount of effort required to do that is just to show up for fifteen minutes. Yeah. Uh, Assuming, like, say people already, I, I would prefer up front you'd, you'd start by p- having people pay online so you don't have to go through that, you know, during the transaction time. Um, but just yeah. setting up setting up a node and, and think, publicizing. Yeah, so setting up a node and publicizing. Setting up a node, I think that's where you need to, like, make it comf- make it easy enough for people to come. So I don't know, maybe the, the, I remember that. that uh, it was a small town close to where you were. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that's a good space for node somewhere in there. Maybe at somebody's, uh, you know, gas station or somebody you know in yeah. there, like maybe the Menards or something. Um, and and because c- it's good to have a big parking lot as well, especially if if you're gonna get a few more producers coming there. It's good to have like an easy in and out space. Um, so yeah, and then then I mean, if you really want to get this going, try to find some other producers yeah. around. That's, right. That's gonna make it a lot easier. So so try to you know. Uh, Communicate with whoever is producing food, and I don't know. It feels like you're a bit out in the woods there, and I don't know how many like artisanal kind of places that don't just sell, um, you know. Oh, there's gonna be there's gonna be a bit of those. I mean, there's quite a. I mean, if you research that, I mean, you can find ten or twenty various people. I know there's a bakery close by. People make eggs yeah. or sell milk, goat's milk or whatever, um, different stuff. Okay. So yeah, I guess the the hard work would be on the the actual organizational marketing aspect. Yeah. You'd actually have yeah. to reach out to all those people. But once you have that, that can pretty much establish itself as a as a good ongoing effort. Basically, yeah. the farmer farmers market without a farmers market, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, and I, I don't know, I don't know if that that's one of the legal things that I'm not sure if it's the same there. Like here, you're you're fully because. The orders have been made in advance. You don't need to get a marketing market permit from it. Like it's just a delivery. It's just a drop off. It's, it's like buying delivery. anything off Craigslist, and you just go and, and, and hand it to someone. Right. But if you're gonna like, if 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 you would have just gone there and put up your stalls and started selling, you'd need like a market permit here. As well, yeah, that's interesting. Um, so that's a that's a good way to hack the system a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for us, that really works. I don't know if that's the same in the U.S. I might have to check that. Uh huh. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. So, yeah, great. So I'd like to definitely explore the possibility of using your interface for for workshops, extreme manufacturing workshop. I mean, if you guys are doing this and this is a good effort and I, I believe in it, this is good. I mean, what you've got looks pretty good for very practical functionality. Um, we should definitely look into setting this up for for our extreme manufacturing workshops as the events. Like inst- I mean, we could potentially just bypass Eventbrite as well you know which charges its own fees or things like that so yeah that'd be great yeah just need to get the users out there that's good 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, I think that that will do it for now as far as a good overview. Um, any other things that you'd like to mention that you haven't that are important or? Um, um I mean, just that it's kind of early days. Uh, we have we we are fairly flexible. Like if somebody feels a, a feature is really useful and you want to come come in like contact us with that, we're, we are. Uh, Constantly listening for the needs of of what people are doing, um, so so we're open for feedback. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, I don't know. I, I think so. We're we're trying to do this so that you can start putting. I mean, you don't have to go all in on it either. Like you can you can just add like a couple of products of what you sell on this and try to try it out. So, you know, you don't have to you don't have to commit more than you want to. If you still go to your informant box to do all that. So it's kind of just, you know, try it out, see how it works, and if it works for you, you know, go for it. Yeah, a few products, but then the only awareness and marketing that has to happen is that somebody has to recognize, hey, this platform actually exists here, yeah. so there's some marketing involved yeah. around that. Um, and any suggestions on how to do that marketing, or any, any experience or learnings that you've had so far, or...? Or just the standard um, stuff. Yes, yeah, so we um, what we found has been working pretty well. Has been to to just try to round up producers, like kind of try to find who's there and, and get initial meetings with them before even starting a note. Yeah, and saying like this is what we want to do, and we are really interested in selling directly, and uh, there's this platform that you can use, uh, and then try to get maybe an opening premiere event. Uh, we've been doing that pretty successfully. We have a premiere event where you, maybe you get a band to play or do something nice so that you have another reason for people to check it out, like the day out or something like that. Uh -huh. uh, and that's a good way to kind of get people to see, like, okay, something's happening here. Um, and I don't know, yeah. A premiere, pretty well. premiere event at the actual location, or that was it typically? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can do it other places as well, but it's really, I mean, if you want to get people to know where it's going to be it's good to be able to just say like this is where people are going to come um you know it's, it's, it's good to show off that location so people know where it is yep uh, stuff like excellent excellent okay victor well that's that's great thank you for the introduction to local uh, food thanks. notes that's excellent we aim to use that as soon as we can and uh thank you for your time Fair. so i'll hang up i'll quit the recording here